Torah TV. The world is thinking. I would I take Dawkins seriously. I think Hitchens is a buffoon. Um, I think that the larger question has to do with what atheism is and is not. I think that when atheism is philosophical, I respect it, and not that atheism would care, but I regard it as even good for religion. That is to say, I, uh, this is a, I'm going to try to make this answer quick. There is a basic difference between the way moderns and medievals look at religion. Medieval, for the medievals, religion was a series of propositions about the universe that, was, that were either true or false. There is a God, there isn't a God, there was creation, matter was eternal, there was providence, there was not providence, there was a war and punishment. For moderns, for a whole variety of reasons, we don't think about religion that way. We regard religion as self-expression and experience, subjective experience, and the truth of a proposition is owed to the intensity with which it is believed. Fear and trembling and dread and anxiety and ecstasy and bliss and all of this stuff, all of this stuff. I happen to think that the medieval way of looking at religion was correct that whatever else religion is, it is a picture of the universe that is either true or false. It is either true or false. By the way, the scientists think this, which is why when I read about scientists, physicists, or others who come to some theistic or atheistic conclusion from their science, they're doing it the old way. They're doing it the old way. They've studied the universe, and they've come to certain conclusions about it. The problem with contemporary atheism, or with the new atheism, it is that it's completely unphilosophical. It is a series of cultural, political, um, and media interventions. Um, you know, all of them making kind of debaters' points against conservatives, Christian fundamentalists, the Bush administration, and so on. None of the writers that you mentioned go to any of the philosophical trouble that atheists used to go to, to try to actually demonstrate the falsity of the religious worldview. I have no trouble with that in the sense that it takes the philosophy seriously, and it is a philosophical endeavor. But, athe but cultural atheism or political atheism doesn't interest me at all because it doesn't lay a glove on the problem. It doesn't lay a glove on the problem. You know, all of these new atheists owe George W. Bush. They should take him to dinner because they owe him a lot of royalties. Um, because you had George Bush with an, this, the unbelievable coarseness of his own religiosity. Remember when the, one of the space shuttles blew up, he actually said that they've now, they've now gone home. And, I mean, for, you know, for all I know, he thinks that they were greeted by a white man with a white beard. I mean, you know. Um, so the, that kind of coarse religiosity produced a coarse anti-religiosity. And that is my main problem with them. In Terry Eagleton's book, well, what's interesting about that book is that Terry, he, he's, he's, he's nagged philosophically by this debate. And he's right, he's right. I mean, I'm not sure I understand where he comes out, but he's right that he recognizes the intellectual inadequacy of all this. You, on top of all this, there's another problem, which is, not the, which is the atheism of complete indifference to the subject. I mean, the, most Americans are atheists not because they believe that God doesn't exist, but because they spend all their time shopping. I mean, in other words, if you live a completely materialist, consumerist life, in which philosophical conviction has no place, that's a kind of atheism. And that's the kind of atheism that, can, that will damage religion more than any philosophical atheism ever did. Not by giving the right or the wrong answer to the question, but by pretending the question doesn't exist or is not important. So I think that the new atheism is, I mean, it's intellectually very shabby. It's intellectually very shabby.